Hello and welcome back, one and all, to Realistic Space Program with me, Cerberus. I would call this episode two, but it isn't really. It's going to be, it's a bit of an update, just uh, keeping you up to speed. Episode two itself will probably be on the weekend. Um, I may try to keep about a two or maybe even a three video a week-ish sort of interval going in the future. But for now, there's uh, there's a been a bit of a hiatus. I've been a little busy this week. Plus, there have been some changes, which I'm going to bring you up to speed on in this little kind of mini episode. And in calling it a mini episode, I'm sure I've cursed myself to ending up with a 20 minute one. But let's stop wasting time. In the middle, you see I've got the Mumac tree loader up, which only ever appears when you're starting a new career mode. And that's what I'm doing. Why am I doing that? Don't worry, I asked for you. Well, that's because the tech tree that I use, the RPL, which you can see down there, Realistic Progression Light, has updated from milestone or version, if you prefer, 18 to 19, or at least it's at 19A now. Uh, it's just newly released in the last, maybe the last day or two, in fact. So we're going to go with that because, of course, we're going to keep using the same progression tree. It's just been updated a little bit. And we'll take a look at that. I've also got the TAC life support settings up here because uh, I didn't do this in my first go around, the one I was using for the first episode. I'm going to turn off Kerbal Respawning. Uh, for those not familiar, TAC life support, you probably are getting an idea of what it's supposed to be. It's a space game, life support. You know, we're talking about having food and water and air. And if you run out, or if your Kerbals run out, they will perish. And with respawn disabled, they won't ever come back. You can set a delay so that they come back in however long this is. It's 9.2 million seconds. I don't really feel like doing that math. It takes a while. But then they're reincarnated. I'm not going to have that, just to add that little bit more... I guess realism, because also it's not like there's ever any shortage of uh, Kerbals. You know, I'll hire one extra one, maybe two extra ones here right now. There's always some there. You'd have to be killing them at a real good clip to actually run out of Kerbals to fly your rockets with. But uh, without further ado, let's head into the Science Center. And we'll have a look at the new version of this tech tree, which has been visually reconfigured a little bit too. It starts out in this little tree shape actually down here. Um, we'll have to we'll have to see together how it branches out, or I'm sure I will later, and you can later as well. Uh, check out the forum thread on the KSB forums, where there will no doubt be a, a screenshot showing the whole thing all exploded and researched and showing you where all the various optional branches, uh, branches for various mods, like the Interstellar Mod, Kerbal Attachment System, um, specific mods like that, Cathane stuff, kind of has their own little sub-branches of the tree for the most part. So let's take a quick look. Down here we have, the, this is the default start node that every tech tree has, basically building on the stock one. Almost nothing in it. Um, Basically, mostly engine ignition stuff is in here, uh, and some other things, a parachute. This here, this up at the top of this little small tree sapling, if you will, is the starting technologies, which is more so, it's the real start tech for this mod set. You get some basic antennas, basic aerodynamic surface, basic fuel tank, you get your launch strut. Uh, stability enhancer thing. For some reason, you get a two and a half meter decoupler, and you get MechJet right off the start, and you get most of its features: maneuver planner, translatron, warp helper, uh, attitude adjustment, the thrust window, and the RCS balancer. The thrust. Well, I'm not sure what the thrust window is. I either call it something different, or it is something different that I don't use. Um, ascent landing guidance, autopilot stuff, uh, you know, space plane guidance, 
things I don't see myself using too much of. Uh, I would like to use Ascent Guidance a little bit, but Mac Jeb's automatic gravity turns don't exactly work well. Work well with the real solar system. It uh, it seems to always wait too long, and then it just flips the rocket over. Uh, it essentially aerodynamically stalls. It's just going straight up and straight up, and it goes so fast, and it, and it just makes a hard turn, and the rocket just flips. Uh, anybody who has Ferrum Aerospace and has played KSP with the Ferrum Aerospace uh, research mod has probably flipped a rocket over and knows what I'm talking about. And then some rendezvous and docking stuff. All very nice to have. Um, different features I'll use at different times. I will be using Mechjub. I do do autopilot stuff. Uh, I can do these things myself, and sometimes I will do these things myself, but I'm, I'm not one of these kind of purists that is going to do everything totally manually. I don't see the point in that. Real space programs have computers do maneuvering stuff, certainly in this day and age, all the time, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be no different. Um, if it gets to my 200th launch and the MechJeb Ascent guidance is working properly, I may well just turn it on and I'll time accelerate through a launch or something because at some point launching a rocket just becomes launching a rocket and um, sure that's a big part of what the game is about but at the same time there are some things that once I've done them a lot of times especially if it's with the same rocket design if I'm not trying something new I'll automate it it's it's how it's gonna be so we'll research that because it's free and that then we start branching out into all sort of options over here on the right you've got your various you know your liquid fuel engines your solid fuel engines um, your structural stuff like your struts that kind of thing uh, staging RCS thrusters decouplers control systems you have well, some more RCS monopropellant tanks, and uh, well, say, basically RCS and SAS stuff, and fairings and adapters. Aerodynamic procedural fairing stuff is down here. KW's fairings, at least some of them, are down here. Um, well, it is what it says on the label, fairings and adapters. Up here at the top is where we get into uh, satellite probe tech. And that is also zero science for the T1 probe stuff, because you only get this one WAC corporal probe. So if you want to get any science at all, you have to research the free uh, probe tech node. So we've done that. This one here, supersonic flight, that's 10 science. I still don't have any, so we'll obviously leave that. We'll come back down here and do the rest of these little branches on the, on the, on the basic little tech sapling stuff is pretty random stuff in fact looks like it's stuff which is maybe unsorted a light decoupler which would be useful but then three and four meter fairings I can't see myself really needing or wanting that and some really big engines we'll leave that for now this one down here to be sorted okay well this is definitely the non sorted parts we have the AIES science instruments which formerly resided in the last version of the tech tree in the things that don't work node which I um, you know which which I laughed at quite a bit and or I chuckled at at least in my last video I want more decoupler stuff I'm thinking that this is this is base. It's it's the spiritual successor to things that don't work. It's things that probably don't work, like the AIES science tools, and things that don't really have any purpose, like these warheads, which you know there, I don't have any weaponization mods running on KSP right now, so it's it's weight, it's ballast, I suppose. If you need to make your rocket's mass a bit more stable, you can throw a ton of lead up at the top of it essentially and if that's what you want to do 
I'd probably just lighten the bottom of my rocket if I could, rather than make the top heavier, because that seems to make a little more sense. Whatever. We'll leave that as it is for now. And here we have early comms, which costs science. Tech 2 probes will cost science. Uh, early electronics, all these things are going to cost science. I think we've unlocked all of the free stuff. Actually, no, we haven't. Tech level 0 engines we will definitely need if we plan on sending anything anywhere other than just to soak up the sun on the launch pad. And parachutes. Basically, well, not all the parachutes, but a healthy starter pack of parachutes. Definitely we're going to grab that. What's this down here? Science instruments. Also zero science. Stock or unsorted science instruments. We use these to deal with the progression blockers and lack of custom experiments. Okay, so well, we'll leave that alone for now. And if I run out of custom experiments, which are on the probes like this WAC Corporal, which I'm interested to see if they've worked any functionality into it, I couldn't find any in the previous edition of this tree when I test flew it a couple of times. Although, having said that, I might have test flown it in career mode, which may have been the reason. So we'll see. It's all I've got, so I damn well hope it gives me some science. Otherwise, this is going to be a real short series. Um, and yeah, so the science instruments, if, like it says, if I don't have, if I can't build a rocket to send one of the probes somewhere to gather new experimental data, well, I'll start running gravity and temperature scans in Earth orbit or something and scrape up a little bit of science that way. But for now, we're going to leave that unlocked. And that, for now, is about all of the tech tree that I can show you, short of flying some rockets, getting some science, and unlocking some tech nodes. So we will leave that for now, and of course we'll be revisiting this, I'm sure, many, many times through the course of this series. So now we have ourselves Earth again. We've come to this stage of the video where I'm showing you the solar system, except I'm not showing you all of the solar system, but most of it basically hasn't changed. You've seen all the rest of them. But here's Earth, and it's gotten its clouds back. Isn't that pretty? I think it's great. I got the clouds working again. I don't have city lights. That's something I, I might integrate uh, a little later. I know I can get maps that provide city light patterns for the actual Earth rather than Kerbin. So I may do that. For now, we've got clouds. We've got clouds that work, which wasn't the case when I made my last video. Um, this is thanks, again, as much as I know he loves shoutouts, uh, this is thanks to Nathan Kell, who, aside from creating or being a contributor in some fashion to most of the mods, at least all the core mods that I'm using for this series, um, he got in touch after watching episode one and uh, offered me a couple of tech tips in a conversation I had with him after in comments and private messages. And so uh, all it took really was adjusting the altitude, essentially, that the cloud layer rendered at. The reason why it wasn't working for me was because the configuration file tells the clouds to happen at a height, whatever height, and they actually happen a few thousand meters lower than that. I'm not sure why. Um, various mod developers and, and testers will probably work that out in the future. But for now, the workaround is just I've told all of the cloud layers everywhere where there are any to just render a little higher than they did by default, and that has brought Earth's clouds out from under the ground, which is good because now they're... Uh, well, they're where they should be. And uh, we will see pretty, pretty clouds. Hopefully from now on, it's not causing me any problems. I am damn close to the memory limit when I bring these in here. Um, but another thing that's helping to kind of stave off uh, the end of the universe in terms of my memory limit is that I've been able now to delete basically every fuel tank other than really specialized stuff from every parts pack that I have. My KW fuel tanks are gone, my Nova Punch, my AIES fuel tanks are all gone. Um, 
on another tech tip from Nathan Kell, because, you know, he he's one of, or the guy, one of the guys, one of the people uh, responsible for these stretchy tanks, which I had been using as much as I could, but I was running into size limits, which according to him actually weren't meant to be as they were for the realism overhaul stuff. So he just said, no, go to this file. And I just changed the number. And now I can, I think I can have tanks of essentially any size I want. Which is okay, because you're still, I'm still going to have engines of a given size, so I can't really cheat by just making fuel tanks way too big. Because uh, if you make a big, if you make a fuel tank that's just way fatter than the rest of your rocket, it'll be horrible aerodynamically, which is a problem with Ferrum Aerospace Research, or the realistic aerodynamics. And I'm still restricted by the size of the engine and the thrust of the engine. If I can't lift the fuel tank, there's no sense making it that big. So I don't really think it's going to... I'm not going to make anything any easier other than just simply having a smaller memory load and fewer parts to... Uh, fewer part textures for the game to worry about. And now it won't crash as much, even with all of the extra clouds and that kind of thing. And that's going to do it for now. Still no rockets being flown yet. Uh, I promise that episode 2, the real episode 2, we will be seeing some of that. I will be doing some of that. I do want to hold off at least until the weekend. I've um, heard from a very reliable source that this new version of the tech tree that I've been showing you has a bit of a hot fix coming out, possibly to uh, to sort some of those unsorted parts that you saw and fix a couple of issues. So that's something I want to wait and see if that comes out in the next couple of days because I'd rather not have to restart over again even if it is from a pretty early point. Um, and after that point with 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 a major update I would say to the tech tree as it is which I think it, I like it. Uh, I'm gonna go with that and pretty much from there on out again once this fix happens on the weekend I get everything all my settings dialed in that's going to be it. I'm locking everything down. It will be kind of a version lock um, with very few exceptions. Won't be any more updates. That's what I'm going to have to run with for the duration of the series because I can't keep updating stuff. Eventually I'll get to a point where I'm you know, 200 flights in and I update something and it breaks an old part and ruins the whole series and we can't have that. So look for episode 2. I would say no later than Monday, possibly dependent on this tech tree hotfix. I may just go ahead without it and edit some settings myself. In any case, no later than Monday. I will catch you guys next time for the real episode 2. Thanks for watching.